Now it is time to welcome our special guest for today. As we move deeper into the 21st century and examine the ways in which we learn and teach, it seems fitting to welcome Shauna Tellerman to Berks. Ms. Tellerman's career has focused on the intersection between design and technology, and since we opened the Makeries this year, it's, it made sense to ask Ms. Tellerman to come to Berks to share with us how she became the innovator, designer, and entrepreneur that she is today. Ms. Tellerman, Ms. Tellerman was the founder and CEO of Simop Studios, which was acquired by Autodesk in 2010. In 2009, she was named one of Business Week's Best Young Entrepreneurs. And in 2012, her story was featured in Tony Wagner's book, Creating Innovators, which Burke's teachers read last summer. Please help us in welcoming Ms. Tellerman to Burke's. Well, good morning, and thanks for having me. I'm very honored to be here and excited to see some of the incredible work going on. It's a really, really special school. So, how many of you guys know? This is gonna work. Sean, make sure to switch it off on the side. There you go. How many people here? Hey, big one. There you go. Know what an entrepreneur is? Raise your hand. Can anybody define that for me? Who would who would think they can define it? How about you, right there? Go ahead. Does something really good? That's known worldwide and something that's really good. That's a, that's a really good definition. Anybody else have, a, have another part? Go ahead with the green book. Uh-huh. Also somebody who starts their own company. All right, one more. Go ahead. Somebody who makes a difference. Those are excellent, excellent descriptions. Well, you guys know way more than I did when you were, when I was your age, that's for sure. <laughs> so when I was about your age, I didn't know what the word entrepreneur meant. I didn't even really think about entrepreneurship um, or starting companies. But what I did do was actually I did start a lemonade stand. <laughs> so I did that every year from when I was about maybe five to about ten. Um, my family and I would go out and put up a lemonade stand during a big race, uh, horse race that happened near our house every year. And we, we did really, really well with that lemonade stand. So that was the beginning of my journey, but really the thing that I wanted to talk to you about was passion. So to me, entrepreneurship and starting a company and doing anything in your life is really about finding something that you're super passionate about. Does this woman look like she's passionate? <laughs> yeah, she's, she looks like she's having a fun time and almost burning it up. <laughs> it's crazy. So that's, to me, that thing, that special thing that I found was art. I loved to paint and draw. Does anybody else in here have something they're really passionate about? That's awesome. So that is the most important thing that you could have. Something that you're passionate about is going to guide you through the rest of your life. So when I was about your age, actually before your age, I went to a private school just like this that went through eighth grade. And in eighth grade, I transitioned to high school. And I went to a school called Friends School. And I loved lots of different things. So I liked all of my classes. I really liked art, but I tried all kinds of things. I tried dancing, I tried singing, I tried drama. I would try anything. I thought it was really fun to explore, really fun to be creative, and ultimately I found that my passion really, really lies with, as I mentioned, art. I love to paint, I love to draw, and I especially love to paint and draw people. And that was something that's carried through my whole career, my whole life. So when I was in high school, I thought that I was going to go to a college called University of Pennsylvania. Has anybody heard of that college here? Yeah, so that, that was the one that I had my heart set on. For some reason, I went and visited lots of colleges, and in my mind, I had decided they have a good, strong arts program, but it's also a really strong college, and I want to go there. I grew up in Baltimore, all the way on the East Coast, and that wasn't too far from my home, so I thought that would be a good fit. And then something unexpected happened to me, which is I didn't get in. 
And so I had good grades, I did lots of extracurricular activities, I thought I was doing everything that you should be doing, and I was, but I looked like a lot of other kids. All of the other kids were also getting good grades and also had lots of extracurricular activities. And so I was devastated. And I heard that this is about the time that people are looking at their, for eighth grade, thinking about their next leap and their next journey. So maybe this is a, a good message for you guys as well. But I thought, that's it. I didn't get into the school I want, and everything's over. And I'm no, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself now. Um, but what was amazing is that the school I did get into, and I didn't know too much about, was a school called Carnegie Mellon. I don't know how many people have heard of that. Raise your hand if you've heard of that school. A little bit less. Carnegie Mellon is a very strong engineering and science school, but I didn't know that at the time. And I went there thinking, okay, fine, I got into this school, no big deal, but the art program seems pretty good, and I get to play soccer, and you know, we'll see how it goes. It turns out that that was the best decision of my life. Going to Carnegie Mellon was the turning point that made almost everything that I've done possible since then. So one of the big messages I want to send everybody aside from finding your passion is that taking an unexpected path, and sometimes when things don't work out the way that you were expecting, it's actually for the better. And so for me, it's transformed my whole life. I went to Carnegie Mellon and I started to think about technology. I got introduced for the first time. At that point, it was, it was early days for technology. So I started to think about online websites and doing graphic design. And eventually, I came across a class that made video game experiences. Um, and it was pretty cool. We got to make these video game experiences where you actually put on, you put a headset on your head, and you were inside the video game. So you would navigate through with sensors and we used a product called Alice. Some people might have heard of it. It's a programming uh, product. And that made these 3D virtual worlds where people could walk, walk around within the video game. When I took that class, I figured out that is what I want to do with the rest of my life. So I ended up going to a program called the Entertainment Technology Center. So you can see there, there's a robot. And there's Star Trek figures and other kinds of cool things. Does it look like a fun place to go to graduate school? Yeah! <laughs> Does anybody want to go to graduate school there? Yeah! yeah. Well, me too, I wanted to go. <laughs> so, all of a sudden, what was, I thought, a bad decision, going to Carnegie Mellon became a really, really good decision. That was a really fun place to end up. So we went there, I went to graduate school there, mostly focused on making entertainment. So video games and robotics and the kinds of kiosks you see at museums. Um, I got to work on something during an internship called The Sims. Has anybody here called part of The Sims? And so Sims 2, way back at Sims 2, is when I got to intern on that. Um, that was really fun. So all this time I was thinking, what do I want to do with my life? Where am I going to go next? So maybe I want to make games and entertainment experiences for museums or for educational purposes. And so I had that stuck in my head. I thought, definitely I'm going to go get a job doing something combining entertainment and education. And I spent all of graduate school thinking I would do that. But what it turns out I did instead was actually took the technology we were building during graduate school and I started a company. So how many people here think they would start a company one day? Cool, that's awesome. I'll tell you what, I, I did not plan to start a company. <laughs> I had no idea when I was your age, no plans. If you had asked me, I would have been like, no way, there's no way, I'm not a business person, I don't know how to start companies. But what happened was I was working on something that I was really, really passionate about. So I spent two years working on a game technology that actually emergency responders like firefighters could use for training. And it allowed them to change the scenarios. It was like a 3D game world, but the firefighters would use it to train and to learn things. And it started getting a lot of interest and a lot of traction. And I had a decision to make. I could go and get a job, maybe go work on The Sims 3, or I could take this technology and see if we could turn it into something that the world could use. And so I decided to take that path. I knew nothing about starting a company. And so this is sort of my third big message for today, which is 
making mistakes. So I didn't know how to start a company. I knew nothing about starting a company, and yet I went out and did it. And you know how I did, how I did it? You know how we made it successful? I made a ton of mistakes. I made mistake after mistake after mistake. I did everything wrong. But you know what? I learned from every one of those mistakes. Every time I made a mistake, we would correct it. We would learn fast, we would change it, we would get things back on track, and then we'd make another mistake, and then we'd get things back on track again. And so my big message here, and this is something that I think about all the time and every day, is that mistakes are totally okay. In fact, mistakes are your best way to learn. Because when you do something wrong, the next time you come across it, you're probably gonna do it the right way. So I started this company, and I started it right out of graduate school with no business experience, and, uh, and we started to get some interest. We got some people to put some money into the company, I built up a team, we built up a product, and one of the big mistakes we made was we hadn't thought about how many people would spend money on the product. And that's a big mistake when you're starting a business. <laughs> so we pretty quickly realized that firefighters, unfortunately, they don't have very big budgets to spend. So they don't buy training materials in big quantities or for big budgets. So what we did was we decided, you know what? This should really be open to anybody. It's a platform that makes 3D environments. It's based in a web browser. Anybody can come to it. So let's just allow anybody to use it. It could be, uh, it could be teachers. It could be um, firefighters. It could be game developers. And game developers really liked what we were doing. And so we ended up naming it Wild Pockets, and it became a game platform for making things, and we had put it in the cloud. So my whole team joined Autodesk. That was an awesome experience. And then last year, about this time last year, I started getting that itch again to go do something, to make something, and to build something. So I thought, similar to before, when I thought I wanted to go to a certain college, and I thought I was going to go be a, um, I was going to go and build something in the interactive museum space. This time I thought, I'm going to go start another company again right away. And like all those other times, I was totally wrong. <laughs> I did something completely different. So I left Autodesk this time last year, and I thought that I'm going to go just start another company. And as I was beginning to think about the ideas for the next company I might start, I got approached by another company that maybe you've heard of called Google. Who's heard of Google? <laughs> Everybody's heard of Google. Now, how many people know what Google Ventures is? Oh yeah? Let's see. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, maybe somebody back there. What, what's Google Ventures? All the way in the back. Do you don't know? I'll, do, I'll define it just so you know. Google Ventures is the venture capital arm of Google. And so what they do is they fund startups. We, we find the best companies and the best technologies in the world. So when you guys are ready to, uh, to start your brain chip company for Alzheimer's, you should come to Google Ventures. And the companies come and they pitch their ideas and we, we give them money to go start their businesses. So it's a pretty cool and unique part of Google. So that's where I work right now. I, I am on the other side. I'm not starting a company, but I meet with people every day who are starting companies. And when we end up giving them money to start their company, we help them get their company off the ground and we help to build their companies and make them super successful. And so I've been there for al almost a year. In May, it'll be a year. And I've gotten to see all kinds of companies, everything that you can imagine. I've seen companies built around Google Glass, I've been seeing companies that do digital health, things like the wearable things that you've seen, um, companies that do uh, car sharing, like Uber, that's one of the, car, the companies in our portfolio. Nest, who's heard of Nest? That was one of the companies in our portfolio. So some of the coolest companies in the whole world have come to Google Ventures and gotten funding and gotten our help. So that's, that's my current job. And we'll see what happens next, but it's probably going to be not what I'm thinking I'm going to do next, but something different. So, um, so maybe I'll open it up and take any questions that people have at this point. Uh, Wild Pockets. SimOps Studios was the name of the company, and the product was Wild Pockets. So what happened with that is we built out, we built a company called SimOps Studios. We built a product called Wild Pockets, and then a bigger company, a 
public company called Autodesk. So we were, we were a team of 10 people. There was only 10 people in my company. And then Autodesk, which has about 8,000 people, um, they came and bought our company. So we all went to go work for Autodesk. And my whole team, my old team, they're all still working at Autodesk. And I worked at Autodesk for two years. It was an awesome place to work because of all the cool products that they make. But I just left last year thinking I was going to start another company. So that's how I ended up at Google Ventures. Other questions? So the question was, did I want to be an artist when I grew up, and was I better at drawing girls or boys? <laughs> Great question. Um, so yes, I thought for a little while that maybe I would be an artist. Does anybody else want to be an artist when they grow up? <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing to want to be. I can tell you today, every job requires some amount of creativity and art. Every job you do requires that. So. I think I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to do something that related to art. I didn't know exactly what, and that's been a big theme in almost everything I've done. And I don't know, I think, I, I'm not sure if I was better at girls or boys. I liked drawing both of them. I actually liked, I liked drawing older people. I liked drawing grandparents the most. <laughs> Maybe a question all the way in the back. Okay, the window. Yes, definitely. Um, so the main reason I wanted to join Google Ventures and start instead of starting a company was to learn. Uh, so I felt like I had started a company and I worked at a big, big company and we actually acquired a company, another company while we were there, but I didn't feel like I had ever been an investor, like really understood what it meant to think about what a great company looks like. So I thought I would learn a lot about different companies at different stages, in different industries, and that's, that's absolutely what I've learned. I've learned so much, and I have much more to learn. So, yes, huge opportunity. Uh, maybe the, the back down here in the sweater. Yep. Five years. I ran that company for five years. Um, maybe all the way over there in the first row of the bleachers. With the headband, yeah? Yeah, good question. So it, maybe it's confusing because I talked about the virtual reality stuff that we did in graduate school, which was really cool. That was all a headset-based virtual reality. But when we started the company, it was all web-based. So it was something that you could do. And by the way, when we started the company, nobody was using mobile devices, which is crazy to think now. But mobile wasn't an option. So it was actually all online. But what was unique is that it was in the browser. It wasn't something that you installed from a disk, which was different. A lot of games didn't require that you installed something. Good question. Back row here with the sweater. Hmm. That's a good question. Was my favorite job Google Ventures or Autodesk? Um, I really like both for different reasons. Google Ventures is a really cool place to work. Google is a cool place to work. I'm sure everybody's heard about that. They have lots of like cool perks. They give us free lunch. It's got a cool campus. Um, we make really awesome products that everybody in the world has heard of. Uh, so it's, that's really interesting. And I love meeting companies. Um, but uh, right now, I'm not creating a product. At Autodesk, I was building products, and I love building products. So I like both jobs in very, very different ways. Yeah. All right, let's do two more questions. Okay, two more. Very much until I got to college. 
so when I went to college, I got my first Mac. And that was the first thing that I owned and really used. Um, and it was really late in life to get into it. But, uh, but that was it. All right, one more over there. What do I think I'm going to do next? All right, so that's a good question because I probably won't do what I think I'm going to do next. <laughs> Um, right now, I think I'm going to start another company still. That's still my plan, to go start something again, but we'll see. All right, I think, is that it?